nothing stays the same forever. Sometimes drastic events change our lives, and our day-to-day -day living is turned upside down. Robin discovers that to follow the path of justice and truth is not always easy. But if he keeps his faith and perseveres, the rewards will be great. So, this is not the first time the forest has been polluted. That's right, Robin, and it's man's greed that is causing it all. Mankind has a lot to answer for. The animals, the trees, is everything going to die? I don't know, but it's getting worse every day. Robin, you must save the forest now, alone. Your father cannot help you now. Tell me, Tuck. My father, what did he do to stop it? Oh, tell me, please. Yes, of course, Robin. It's what I came here for. As I told you, your father, George, Mary, and I had gone to the woods and by chance discovered the copper mine. The area had been one of the loveliest in the forest, but those greedy men had changed all that forever. With the excavation works, we hardly recognized the place. It was scarred and spoiled, and they were dumping all the waste into the river. See, George! Look at all that stuff pouring into the river. That's what's poisoning the fish and killing the trees. Oh, no! George! I'm going down there to tell Mr. Gibson what's happening and get him to close the mine down. You're wasting your time, George. The man is a villain and he will never listen to you. Duck is right. We must tell the others, then make a plan. Don't worry. I'm sure Mr. Gibson will listen to me. I'll have to convince him that I'm right. I'll come too! Wait for me! Ah! George! What did you do that for? That's just a teacher not to come nosing around here, pal. Now clear off. Wait! Hmm? Please, Mr. Gibson, you must listen to me! Oh! 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 Trees are dying. The fish are dying. The birds are dying. Do I care? No, my mind is making me a lot of money. Uh, that's enough! Duck, no! Why are you interfering, little... Huh? How dare you make a fool out of me? You'll pay for this! Stop it! Huh? Tuck has got nothing to do with this. I'm the one you want. Right, man. Get them. <laughs> Come on. Uh. Hey. <laughs> Come on, time oh, for a no. bath. <laughs> I got you. Uh. And I yeah, don't want to see you here again. Don't come back here again. <laughs> oh, dear, poor George. Tuck, is he all right? We must get him home. Help me, Mary. George? It's no good. If only I were a bit tougher and stronger. Oh? Come on now, George. Oh. Let's go home, eh? George! Uh, Easy oh. does it. Careful now. Oh. We need to see the governor. Uh, open the gate. Come on, we gotta see him. Please let us in. We gotta save the woods. Silence! The governor is a very busy man and cannot see you. Now please go home. Uh, oh. They had pinned all their hopes on the governor. They were sure that he would save their forest by closing down the mine that threatened their very lives. But it was no use. Their cries went unheard. This is useless. But what more can we do? If the governor won't help, then Sherwood is doomed. This is a dark day for Sherwood. What can I do? Huh?
course, there is a way. If no one else will do it, then I will. I will not allow Sherrod to be destroyed by those stupid and evil men. I will save Sherwood. Please, sir, can you tell me how George is? I haven't seen him for days. Uh, well, miss, you see, it's difficult. May I come in, please? I'm sure he'll want to see me. You see, the problem is, I can't. Master Huntington has given instructions that he will not see anyone. Not even you, miss. <gasps> Mary. Master George, Miss Mary said that I was to tell you she is going away for a little while. I see. You could still catch her. No. I can't. You know where I must go. Oh. I must go to the armory. This is a day that I'd hoped would never arrive. That day, George entered the armory of his own castle for the first time. He had never before believed in fighting and had never so much as lifted a sword or a bow in his life. But he was searching for something in particular. The legendary bow of Huntingdon, which had lain forgotten for years. The inscription read, Only he who is pure of heart may draw the sacred bow, as God will witness. I don't like fighting, or weapons. They are evil. But now, in the name of justice, I must make use of them. I need to be strong to save Sherrod from destruction. May heaven give me the courage and the faith to draw the bow. I will not betray my cause. God, give me the strength. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. After that, he started training hard every day, always alone and in secret, building up his strength and stamina, far from prying eyes. In the meantime, I was trying to find a remedy to the water pollution. I tried all sorts of experiments, spending hours studying the results. Hey, you! Ah, Mr. Gibson! What are you doing here? Ah. What have we here? Incriminating evidence about the mine? We'll be ruined if this information should get out. There. Hey, you! I don't care how you do it, but get rid of them! You should never have come <laughs> sniffing around here in the first place. Put me down, please! Oh, Let me go, please! Huh? Hey! Oh, oh. Someone's falling at us! What's going on? Is it? Hey, is it another one coming? Watch out! Oh, oh, let's oh, get out of here! The truck. Ah. All I could think about was saving my notes. I didn't care who was firing the arrows, I just ran for my life. Welcome home, Mary. It's so good to see you. Oh! Oh! Mary and George. Mm. I can't. 
came to spend a few days with her and find them together. Oh, this is too much. Curse you, George. You will pay for this. Well, George, I must say, you look full of the joys of spring. You know, I hardly recognized you. I feel much better. I've been training, you know. Watch this. Hey, what are you doing? No one is allowed past here without a permit. What permit? By order of the governor. No one's allowed in the forest. Anyone caught sneaking in will be executed. That's ridiculous. You can't do that. Take it down. You just try it. Stop it, Tuck. No, let me go, George. No, leave it, Tuck. We'd better go. I won't let them get away with this. Everyone must be told the truth about the river pollution. I will even write to the king if needs be. That's a good idea, Tuck. The king is sure to help us if he knows about it. Of course he will if he knows it's a good cause. We must make sure he knows about it. After all, he is the king. Well, goodbye, George. I will walk Mary home. Thanks, Tuck. You're a good man. Goodbye, George. Goodbye. See you soon. Goodbye, Mary. <laughs> Hi, Alfred. Are you okay? <laughs> Welcome back, Master George. What's wrong with Alfred? He looked terrible. Ah, uh, his baby boy is very ill with the fever. Surely we have some medicines. Well, yes, sir. Usually we do, but we have run out at the moment. Run out? I'm afraid so. The best I could do was give him some of our fresh water. Hmm. Well then, let's see if that works first. If it doesn't, I'll fetch some herbs from Sherwood Forest. I can't believe it. It's too cruel. All he did was run to the forest. Well, he didn't have his permit. No, but his baby was sick. This is terrible. Isn't there anyone who can save him? This man has broken the law. He was caught red-handed stealing some of the governor's herbs. He will be hanged. Shut up! If you know what's good for you, you'll shut up and you'll end up joining him. Ready? Listen to what I have to say. I will not let you hang this man. He has done no wrong. It is you who are the criminals, and I will fight you every step of the way in the name of justice. Well, don't just stand there. Go and get him. Easy, girl. Who's there? Come out slowly and show yourself. Tuck! So it was you. You were the masked rider. Well, well. You have changed. I hardly know you. You always hated fighting, and now look at you. I did it for justice, Tuck. I'm still the same inside. Those that live by the sword shall die by the sword, my friend. So you once said... A sword has two sides, just like a man's soul, and he can choose to fight for good or evil. So finally you have made your choice to fight, have you? But have you thought about poor Mary? <sighs> Of course I have, Tuck, and it's for Mary that I'm doing this. I don't understand. Ever since I can remember, Tuck, this forest has been our home. It was a place of joy and peace. We grew up here. We had fun and laughed here. Remember? I remember it well, George. <sighs> and it was here that Mary and I fell in love. The more my love for her grows, the more determined I am to save this beautiful place, which means so much to us. You too, Tuck. We all live well here, Tuck, because of the gifts the forest has given us. 
It is my sworn quest to protect it and all who live here. You're right. Now I understand, my friend. I will help. You're a good man, so you are. And may God bless you, George. May he bless you too, Tuck. Mm. Did you say a gamekeeper? Yes. I think you mean a poacher. Find him and kill him. Mm. Yes, sir. Immediately. When will those peasants learn? Hmm? Hey, bring me some more food. Huh? Hey? What am I supposed to do with this? You could always try eating it. Huh? Hey, who are you? And what do you think you're doing here? Just call me the gamekeeper. The gamekeeper? Ah! This is a poisoned fish from the river which was polluted by your mine. Ah, what? What mine? What do you mean? Don't pretend you don't know what's happening in Sherwood. You gave the orders! No, please, wait. You must believe me. I don't know what you're talking about. What orders? I, I, I didn't give any orders. I... What's this? Huh? Huh? The representative of His Majesty the King, Count Northam! Hey, Count Northam, you say? What's he doing here, I wonder? Hey, well, the governor was certainly surprised. The letter I had sent to the king had been successful, and Count Northam had been sent to investigate the pollution problem in Sherwood. What? Are you trying to tell me the king has ordered the mine to be closed? You're joking. I'm not joking. There's going to be trouble, and you should leave Sherwood immediately. If you think I'm going to close down that mine, lose all that money, you're quite mistaken. Well, think it over carefully, Gibson. I'm leaving. You traitor. You're not going to walk out on me now, mister. What? Ah! Ah! <laughs> it is your greed that has brought this upon us. And so the mine was closed down. That day marked our victory. The forest was saved, and with it, the lives of all who lived there. At last, it's over. Justice has been done. So I was right. It was you all the long George Huntingdon. A little while later, George and Mary got married. And Alwyn? Well, he was hired by the governor. One day I shall be governor of Nottingham. It's only a matter of time. The day will come and then I will have my revenge on you, George Huntingdon. Tremble in your boots. That day is closer than you think. Years later, he was made a baron and returned here as governor. And the lying, cheating Cecil that we all knew as a boy now rules Nottingham with a rod of iron. And his heart is still full of hatred and evil. So my father protected Sherwood Forest. That's right. And Alwyn killed him because of it, Robin. Oh, Robin, that's why he killed your mother too, the evil swine. Maybe. I'm not sure, but maybe you were right about that. But one thing is sure, history is repeating itself. And Alwyn, like the governor before him, is only interested in lining his own pockets while the poor people of Nottingham starve and Sherwood Forest goes to ruin. He'll have to deal with me. I shall carry on my father's fight. This forest is too important to be destroyed. I shall always protect it. Yeah, let's fight. We'll protect the forest from Baron Alwyn. Me too, I'll help. And me, and me. Me too. Thank you. Keep the faith, Robin. Be brave and fight for right. Thank you, Friar Tuck, I will. 
You sounded just like my father. You spoke as he would have done. <laughs> Father, I will carry on your fight for justice, never fear. I would give my life for it. The spirit of the bow is with you, my son, Robin Hood. Sherwood Forest has faced many threats over the centuries, but now it faces its biggest challenge. Baron Alwyn and his evil henchmen are determined to flush Robin Hood and his friends from their leafy home by destroying it with fire. Not only does Robin have Baron Alwyn on his back, but in the next episode, Gilbert returns and is also hot on Robin's trail. Is there time to defeat Gilbert and save Sherwood from burning down? Find out next time.